Now we're ready for the second part of our UFO rescue game. We're going to be creating several procedures for this. It might take us a little bit longer than the first one, but this is what's going to make our game really cool. So we're going to create a few biped procedures. This is for our people on aliens, and the first one's just going to move around. Since we have aliens and people, we can actually create an array for this and use some of the techniques that we learned in Alice to make this work pretty smoothly. So we're going to create a biped procedure that will have all the people and aliens move around randomly. This is similar to some of the programs we did like our uh, Funky Tiger and that kind of thing. So we're going to use uh, each and together because we want them to all kind of move at the same time, but randomly. So we are going to use random numbers. Let's get into Alice and we'll get started. So here's our program and this is where we left off. I'm still in my event listeners and we've got our key press going on. We're going to come back and modify this in just a minute. Let's click on my first method and let's get our comments and everything going because you want to be able to identify that you're the programmer. This is chapter 6, lesson 3. This is the UFO rescue and then the date. So we're going to get that taken care of. And we're going to create some biped procedures. So let's click here and go to biped and add a procedure. And this is our move around. So let's call it move around. And the first thing we need to do is to create an array for all of our bipeds. So this is going to be an array. We're going to click that there. And the type is biped. So you can see that our alien and all of our people fit in here. And let's call this, and we'll call it people. And now, when I move randomly, think about what you did in some of your other programs. We want it to happen together, so I'm going to drag in and do together. Then I want, I'm going to pick two motions. I'm going to have forward, backward, and left, right. I'm not going to have it go up and down, so it's not going to go into the air. But I'm going to pick two of these. I'm going to have move, forward, and I can use a negative number for forward and backward. And I'm going to have move left, which can go for left and right. And I just picked any number as my placeholder. I'm going to come to random. And I'm going to pick my own range. And once again, I'm just going to pick any two numbers so I can go back and change it. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to click random. Okay, so what two numbers should we pick? We want them to just move a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to pick one. Maybe we could even go to one and a half. But it's just going to be a little bit of random motion. So let's go to a custom decimal number. And I'm going to put 1.5. Or you can just use one. Some kind of small number. And this one's going to be the negative. So it can go forward or backward. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. So negative 1.5. So we've got our random numbers there, and I can change the duration if I want them to move a little bit faster, but I think we'll be okay with one second there. Now I want all of them to move at the same time, so I'm going to use a each in together, and now this is where I'm going to pick my parameter, so it is the gallery type. I do have one already, so you see people right there, and I'm going to put items, so this is kind of how we were doing it with our funky tiger, remember that, and then once I have it, I'm going to put my do together in there, and I have to use item right here and right here, otherwise it doesn't work, so that's that important step, don't forget it, okay, so we've got our move around, procedure all finished, this looks pretty familiar, we've done this kind of thing before. Let's go to our next procedure. This is where this UFO is actually going to pick up either the alien or the people. So this is going to be biped as well. And we're going to call it pick up. We're going to need two parameters for this, and this is going to be our cone and our UFO. So let's go ahead and add them in. They are not arrays, but they are objects. So the UFO is right here as an aircraft. And I'm going to call it ship for my spaceship. And then I need another one for the cone. Okay, so that's my shape. 
I could get home. And I'm going to call this B. So I have my two parameters I'm going to be using. And I want to get C if the cone is by one of my people. So I need an if statement. I always, oops, always make true. Okay, now I want to know if one if my person is colliding with the beam. So here's my biped, and I'm going to use the function. And here's colliding with, and I'm going to use beam. So if they're touching each other, it, then I want the ship to pick it up. So it's going to move, so my biped is going to move to the ship. Let's use move to the ship. And then I want the person to basically move with the ship. So I'm going to change its vehicle. It's right here to be the ship. Now another thing I can do is change its opacity to zero so it basically disappears. So I'm going to set opacity to zero. So if it doesn't quite move with it, it we won't see it and this will all look really good. So we've just got our pickup. Now the next thing we need to do is check to see if it is it an alien or is it a person. So we want to pick up the aliens, not the people. This is also going to be a biped procedure. So we're going to call it check to see. time we are going to use an array of bipeds and we're going to use the each and together loop and we're going to have three parameters so we're going to have our biped array and we're going to have our cone and our ship again so let's start with our biped array so I'm going to click right there and it's going to be biped so right there and let's call it people And the other two are like we did for pickup. So I'm going to have one that is my ship. And I'm going to call it aircraft. And then clicking aircraft, and I'm going to call it ship. And then another one for my car. So I'm going to click there and call it B. So I've got my three parameters I'm ready for the code. I'm going to change the opacity of the beam a little bit, just so it's like, hmm, I'm close to it. So it's going to change just a little bit, um, so it kind of looks obvious that it's checking to see. So the first thing I'm going to do here is um, set my beam opacity. I'm going to come to opacity and set it to 0 0.8, and then I want to change the this to my beam. So the beam's opacity is going to set at 0.8. Then I'm going to use my array and a loop just to check it to see what is it. So each in together. And then this is going to be my people. So for my gallery class, I pick a biped. And then I come here, and sure enough, there's people. I'm going to call it item. It's going to be the name. Okay. What I'm going to do is pick up. I'm just going to check to see um, if anything is close by, and if so, I'm going to pick it up. So I already have this. Scroll to the top here to pick up. Okay. And I'm going to have the ship and the beam. Then I'm going to set the opacity of the beam back to 0.2. So basically, if I copy this line of code, I'm going to change this. Done. We've got our three biped procedures. Now we're ready to modify our key press events. I'm going to come back here to my event listeners. I've already got the, the arrow keys here. I'm just going to add the code to it. So as the ship is moving, I'm going to check to see if it's close to any of those people. So I'm going to use a do together move the move in there, and then I also want the check to see, which is the biped. So if I click on one of my little bipeds here, I have check to see. 
and from my custom array, and there we go. Now I'm going to have to do all of my people here. eight objects, so I have zero through seven. And I'm going to have to do this every time, but it's going to look like this. Okay, now we have all this added up, so every key press event pretty much looks the same now. So whether we're going left, right, forward, or backward, it's going to be checking. So now you have your, the code finished for your key press events. They should all look the same. And what we want them to do is be able to work together. So if I press at the up and left, we want it to kind of go in that direction. If they do it right now, it's not going to quite work that way. There's one thing I forgot to do back in part one when we were doing the first key presses. So we're going to go back and do it right now. So you see up here in the name by arrow key press listener, and there's a detail. I'm going to click here on detail, go to multiple event policy, and we want to do combine. So all the key presses can be combined together. And do that for all four of them. Okay, it's not just the first one, but make sure you do it for all four. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to do it now, and just click on my combines. And this is going to make our spaceship, when we remove it, it's going to make it a lot more smooth. Okay, so now we really are through with this part. We've got all of our little pieces together. We're going to come to my first method. We're going to put it all together. We're going to do the finishing touches. We're going to need to add some variables, while loop, all that kind of thing. Now you know we're going to need some variables, so let's go ahead and drag up a comment for our variables section. And I'm going to have two arrays, one for my aliens and one for my people, and then I'm going to have a variable for if I'm winning or I'm losing. Let's start with our variables for our arrays. I'm going to drag one up. This is going to be an array. It is going to be biped. And we're going to call it aliens. And we'll do our custom array, and I'm only going to pick my aliens. I'm going to do something similar to like this for my people. This is pretty cool. Let's drag up another variable. This is going to be an array. It's going to be biped. I'm going to call it people. And I will do my custom array. And this time, just pick your people. third variable is going to be for win or lose, and there's many different ways you can do this. I think the easiest way is just to make it a number, a whole number, like zero for lose and one for win. So that's pretty basic. Let's drag up a tile. This is not going to be an array. It is going to be a whole number. We're going to call it win, lose, and I'm going to start it at zero. And now we're going to add a while loop, and we're going to continue until you win or lose. use our while, and we always say true. So I'm going to keep playing as long as win, lose is zero. And when it's not, then I'm going to change it to a one, and we'll find out if we win or lose. So uh, my condition is going to be for a whole number, and it's going to be equals equals zero. So I'm going to have win, lose equals equals zero. So this is the, con the initial condition I set it at. As long as it's zero, I keep going. And so what I want to do is get all three aliens, that's one way to win, or if I pick up one human, I lose. So I have two ways, I can win or I can lose. Either way, I'm going to set win-lose to something other than zero, and then I will be able to determine did I win or did I lose. But this, that way the loop will stop. Now as this loop is going, I'm going to be using the arrow keys. So if this is an interactive game. And I don't have to really worry about the arrow keys. That's going to be going around doing its thing, picking up aliens. So I just want to check to see if I've got all three aliens, then I'm going to win. That's going to be an if statement. So 
I'm going to drag up an if statement. So I want to see if the, the ship is colliding with the aliens. I'm going to click on my ship. I'm going to come here to its functions where I can find is colliding with. Let's drag it up here to the true. Now I can pick each alien, but I have it as a array. So let's go ahead and use the array. I'm going to come here to aliens. Remember our indexes are going to be 0, 1, and 2. So let's pick index 0. We can check to see if it's colliding with the first alien. Now it has to go more than that. I'm going to come here to this, and I'm going to do both. True. I'm going to call up the colliding with. Make sure I come to the second true array over here. And then I'm going to come to my array and pick the next one. So now I'm checking the, in the first alien. I'm checking the second alien. I'm using my array. And I have a third alien. So I'm going to have to come here to this last triangle and do yet again another and. True. And I'm going to do another colliding with. Come way over here to the last true. And I have the second. So I've got all three aliens. I'm going to see. Am I colliding with all three? If so, I'm winning. I want to change the state of win loops. I'm going to use my assign tile, drag it up here. I'm going to assign it the value 1. 1 will be win. Now, if I get even one human, I'm going to lose. So let's take care of that. Now, I don't have to check every person. I just need to have even one person. So I'm going to come here to my else. And I can check them at the same time. I have an array of people, so I can use each and object together. The type is biped. You're going to see here that I have two choices. I just want the people. And I'm going to call it um, person. So it's singular. Okay, so I want to see if any person is colliding with the UFO. So I want to see if any person is colliding. So I need an if statement. Now I want to do the colliding again. And I'm going to come here to people. And then I can change this to person. So it's going to check each one. So to see if any person is colliding with the UFO, if so, I lose. So I want to change the state of win lose. And this time I'm going to make it zero. I mean two. So zero means keep playing. One means you win, two means you lose. Now I also want the people and the aliens to move around all the time. So I'm going to put that in my loop. And I could put it here in the else. I could put it here just after the if. But I want them to move around all the time. So I'm going to use my move around, and that's biped. Click back on our procedures. going to move the people, and then I also want to move the aliens. And I could do this in a do together so that they're all moving like all the time. So I move the aliens, and then I'm going to click on the person, and move them. So I'm going to move all the aliens, and I'm going to move all the people. And we can run the code at this point just to make sure everything is working. We, have, we aren't actually going to say that you win or lose yet, but we want to know, is our code going to work? noticing that it's not quite picking up everything as it should. So I probably have a little mistake in here. Let's figure out what it is. I'm going to close this. I'm going to come back to my check to see because it doesn't seem to be picking up everything. And one thing I noticed is that one error that I said, oh, don't forget this. This is the most common error. I have a, my item right here and I did not use it inside. So I'm going to make sure I do that. Let's try running it again. So it's really important to be a good tester because everybody makes these little mistakes. It's not really a big deal. It's just a matter of finding them. And if, you don't, if you're not a good tester, if you say, oh, it works once, I'm good, it doesn't always work. You know, so now I see that it was only picking up one thing before. And as I keep going, hopefully I can go around and I can pick up all the items. So you want to be a good tester. And if you see something isn't quite right, 
Just go back, re-look at all of your code, look for those common themes, like that one that I just pointed out. And I should be able to use like, multiple arrows at the same time. I've got things going. it's working a lot better. We're ready for our final touches. Let's come back to my first method. We've got our variable section, but I didn't make a comment section for our, our the main programming, so let's do that. I've got lots of really good code here. The last thing we want to do is win or lose, so I'm actually even going to just draw a comment up for that, kind of divide up my code. So. My game, my loop is going to make it stop right here, and now I want to determine did I win or lose. So win or lose is no longer zero, it's going to be a one or a two. If it's a one, I win, and if it's a two, I lose. So that's going to be a simple if statement. I'm going to drag this up here, true. I'm going to compare win lose, so that is a whole number. So I've got win lose, and I'm going to compare it to one. If it is one, what do you want to do? We want to have some kind of a message that said, yay, you win. So, my suggestion is to say something like, mission accomplished. Do we even have the UFO say it? So, I'm going to click here on the UFO, and he's going to say, mission accomplished. Okay. And then we can add some more things, like you win, um, and I can leave this longer if I want to. And sometimes it takes people time to read. So I've got mission accomplished, and let's say you win the game. Now if I don't do anything, that the ship is still going to be there, and it's still going to be able to pick up people, and I really don't want that to happen, so I'm going to kind of set the scene, like turn it black, so that the game is over. I'm going to just click on the regular scene right here, so I have these things right here. These procedures, and I'm going to set the atmosphere color to black. And I'm also going to do a fog density, so it's kind of, kind of go into it. So I'm going to do that right above it. So I'm going to have my fog density. And I'm going to set it to 1 and then just make it go kind of quickly, so I'm going to do the duration 0.25. So I'm going to have a message, and then I'm just going to make the screen kind of go black. So that's if I win. I'm going to do something similar for if I lose. I'm going to have the UFO say something like, um, you captured a human, you lose. So I'm going to click back on the UFO. He's going to say, you captured a human. Say something like you lose the game. And I can change the duration maybe like I did right there. And then once again I'm gonna change the set the fog density and the atmosphere. So I'm gonna click back on my scene. I have fog density to one and I change the duration. To set the atmosphere color, and it's just going to be black as well. But you can play around with it and make things different if you want. So let's try playing the game again. I've got everything working. I've just added in my win or lose, and let's just pick up a human and let's see if we lose. Start it and let's see if we can win. So I'm going to have to avoid the humans. It's not always going to be easy. They're moving around. I'll find my humans. Hard to find. There we go. And this one. 
mission accomplished. Now you can still make some tweaks and adjustments to this. This is all the basic game. If you want to try and adjust the speed or make some other little changes you want, add some people. There's a lot more you can do with this, but this is a basic fun game that you just now created. You used a lot of techniques that we've been learning throughout this semester, and you've had a good time, I hope. I hope that you should show your game to other people and just have a good time playing it.